Hello, welcome to One Man's Tracks. Thanks for joining me for another retrospective album review. This week I stumbled upon a group that came out with some pretty formative pieces of punk, hardcore, and post-hardcore music during their short time together as a group. These young guys came out with some uncompromising and headstrong pieces that really scratch that punk rock itch that I didn't realize had been gnawing at me for so long. The Necros originally comprised of Andy Wendler, Barry Hensler, and Todd Swalla, and they were just some teenagers loving skateboarding in the 70s when they started to hear some punk music and felt compelled to come up with a group of their own. There wasn't a whole lot of local inspiration to draw from growing up in Maumee, Ohio, so they took from classics like The Stooges, The Clash, Team Rex, Alice Cooper, New York Dolls, and of course DOA and Black Flag, and would start to come out with their very own original rowdy and raucous reverberations by 1981 when they put out two EPs through Touch and Go Records. The very first releases by that independent label. While he did continue to write for the group, Andy left in 81 and was replaced by their bassist Brian Polak for a brief period when they'd come out with another 7-inch through Touch and Go with production help from Minor Threads vocalist Ian McKay. When they made his return in late 82 and in 83 they released their very first full-length album, Conquest for Death. The band got the opportunity to tour with an impressive array of artists that would help shape their sound throughout the early 80s, such as the aforementioned Black Flag and Minor Threat, as well as classics like The Misfits and Bad Brains and just so many more. They follow up their first LP with a split album with White Flag, and then in 1986 they came out with this. Well, sort of. They came out with the vinyl version of the first half of this compilation through Restless Records in 1986. This is Tangled Up by the Necros. And that's only the first half of this CD. The second half contains a live album titled Live or Else that was released after the band broke up. This was in 1990 by Medusa Records, I believe. And that was only on wax as well. And so it wasn't until 2005 when Ryko Disc would make their music available on digital format. It's got that cool exclusive green tinted jewel case that Ryko makes and that Big Daddy Roth album art with the rat fink and the mongrel mutt. How could I not pick this up when I saw it second hand? This also even has some cool liner notes with it being uh, diary entries from the, the lead singer Barry from when they were on tour and recorded the live version of this album and it just got some great stories and it is a fun package that I'm just so stoked to have. Yeah, tangled up, live or else, slam it together, you've got a big chunk of the next rose catalog right there. From their beginnings as fairly one note smash and show punk kids reminiscent of what you'd hear from an early Descendants album to this tangled up and live or else compilation having songs on it that are longer and more dynamic than some of the entireties of their early EPs. The Necros had matured and fully realized a formidable band that they had become and ended up being too punk rock when they'd open up for Megadeth and even too metal when they'd open up for the Circle Jerks and this CD is the perfect thing to exemplify that with. Andy's guitar playing is much more nuanced and rock influenced, Todd's drumming heavier, more controlled and Barry's vocals, while still hardcore, the lyricism is more accessible and it takes their sound from just a furious fist to the face and changes it into a more melodic and groovy gut punch that's interspersed with some heavier head bangers. And overall, it's more than I'd come to expect from a youthful group of hardcore punk rockers. I sure feel fortunate to have one of the few Necro CDs out there and I'm sure curious to know what your thoughts and memories are about these aggressive Ohioans and this album in particular. Leave those comments down below and I guess while you're at it, since I don't really have a lot of hope in seeing a Necro show live ever, I'd 
love if you could leave me some contemporary punk groups to check out while you're down there. In the meantime, I'm going to be taking quite a few minutes now and breaking down these tracks and seeing if I can surmise this awesome LP. Starting out real strong with the super punk rock opener titled Gun. I did say it was less fist to face, but that doesn't mean they're not going to come out swinging on this absolute cracker. They stay true to the punk attitude and scare off anyone who is unprepared to handle the necros. Blizzard of Glass then rocks in a little bit steadier with some heavy metal riffs that honestly might even be considered hard rock riffs today the way metal music has progressed. Actually, a few times in this track list, you get some riffs that feel either like they were taken from earlier rock tracks or maybe even used in later rock songs or even other punk tracks. It's really familiar. Like in the case of the following track, Big Chief, you get this riff that feels like it's either a sped up psych rock riff or maybe even something like the Misfits would do. I know these guys were pretty much the Misfits' biggest fans, so that's entirely possible that's where this came from. Maybe I'm way off base here, but to my ear it does feel a tad shameless. But I understand. These songs rule. I think they're great, and beyond that guitar riff that kind of sticks in my ear a little bit extra, maybe not feeling the most original, it still feels like these are some of the Necro's most fully fleshed out tracks with Big Chief having these multiple phases and feeling like this wailing fast glam metal song with just great shouted echoing punk vocals on top of it. Now you're hit with a faster blast that is open wound, it storms in, again on some riffs that feel vaguely familiar but the energy and delivery is hard to the core. Perhaps this recurring sound and theme is one of the reasons why they're referred to as a post-hardcore group and not just a punk or hardcore band. I'm definitely still learning about the evolution of these genres. The title track exemplifies that hardcore rock direction that they might have carried on in had they stuck together. Lyrically, it's quite intense from what I can pick up, but I really ought to be able to understand more, especially due to how much more open this instrumental is than the speedier hardcore numbers previous to it, but I guess I'm just going to have to keep spinning it until I pick up on those words, and until then I'll have to stick with explaining more straightforward hardcore numbers like the following hit and run track, Power of Fear. Blackwater does well to pump me right up and then noise accelerates to this album's ripping climax with the obliterating intensity on everything. It fucking rips, baby! 500 Years of Pack of Cools is then a totally different side of the Necros. It's like a doper, instrumental version of Metallica's Nothing Else Matters. Melodic, heavy metal, frankly ahead of its time. They've even got a heavy metal Pink Floyd cover of Nile Song on here too, and then you get an entrancing three minute grand piano and string instrumental that was put together by the band's final bassist, Ron Kowalski, and it closes out the tangled up section of this compilation and serves as a pretty nice little breather before you jump into some more live hardcore action. The live or else portion proves that this band were just as much if not more of a force outside of the studio as they were in. It's such a great addition to an already awesome album. This is one of the things that gives this double album so much more value. It's their understanding of the difference between putting together a studio album and a live performance and their track lists and performances reflect that so well. It sounds great and it flows super well. Maybe there was some tinkering, some remastering before this digital release, but nonetheless I'm still very impressed by this, especially after checking out a few of their live shows on YouTube and definitely feeling a tad underwhelmed by the audio fidelity. Probably something to do with bigger crowds and just superior musicianship and 
obviously better recording techniques. About half the songs from the live version are from Tangled Up, and so I'll just be running through the songs I haven't hit on yet, skipping past the title track Tangled Up, as well as Blizzard of Glass, we get to Love Dagger, which is just a great heavy metal punk rock song that has that throw your fist in the air energy. It reminds me quite a bit of the energy I found from the opener from Tangled Up Gun that they thankfully put in right after here. A pair of classically misunderstood Necros tracks follow up a wailing rendition of Black Water here. They scream in with Race Riot and Youth Camp, two songs that mean the opposite thing that people tend to associate them with. Race Riot has even been co-opted by right-wing radicals, and Youth Camp is just taken too damn seriously. Like, come on guys, don't you understand punk rock and the spirit of it all? Whatever, these songs are great, and I think they're pretty rare to have on recordings, because I don't believe there's many other versions of these tracks out there. We get another rendition of Open Wound that's followed up by a song called God's Anvil, which is probably the closest the band got to stadium rock, but Barry's vocals come in and just crush it, giving it no space or any catchy bullshit either. I'm not a huge fan of that particular song, but I do super dig the energy from the following face forward, as well as the heavier, accelerating song called ASFB, and then we get a welcome return with Big Chief being played again. I just dig that track so much, and that one's followed up by some of that classic interactive punk you just gotta love with the song Take Em Up. This excellent post-hardcore opus ends in a pretty strange spot with a Nugent medley. It is what it sounds like. Barry is actually Ted Nugent's godson and he even met up with him while they were touring with Overkill and Megadeth and it's actually the final diary entry on this awesome CD's liner notes. It's really such a blast from start to finish, a well-connected and conceived compilation that engages and has hugely educated me in the radical world of 80s punk music, rooted in hardcore, but shifting that genre towards a less one-note, more groovy direction. The Necro's passion for performance was clear. I super dig this group, their music, and a lot of the groups that they've helped introduce me to. After their split in 1987, Barry would go and sing for the group Big Chief, Ron and Todd joined the group Laughing Hyenas, and Andy played for the group Gone in 60 Seconds. I'm excited now to take the time, dig through those bands' discographies, and if there are any other similar groups from that period that I really ought to not miss out on, please leave me a comment down below. I think these two albums here rock. If you think this album rocks, maybe consider checking those out as well. Leave me a like if you think dislikes ought to be visible on this platform, and I think subscribing would be real awesome. Checking out my weekly dose of throwback retrospective music mania. I'd love to see you next time. Have a good end of your year, and I'll see you in 2022. Bye-bye.